today, and I noticed that you've got a little airplane called the Quarter Plane. What's that all about? That's right. Um, this is an airplane that I designed. I started uh, March 27th the last year, and um, I built it in a one-bedroom mobile home, 19-foot uh, porch by 8-foot, and uh, it's just uh, my idea of what an ultralight should be, and it's plans built. Uh, we're going to offer plans, and um, it's uh, got a Rotex 277. It can use a 377 or 477. Um, high wing. Um, and it's just a really basic, simple ultralight and very strong. You know, we're talking about simple ultralight. What kind of construction we're using in the fuselage, for example? Uh, the fuselage is um, square tubing, two inch square tubing, 6063 uh, T351 is what it is. You could use T6 tubing also. Eighth inch thick, uh, eighth inch thick gussets. Um, there's two common size bolts in here. Uh, the entire airplane is is uh, quarter inch bolts and three eighths inch bolts, A and three and A and four. Um, it's, it's designed to be within FAR 103 regs. Um, it does weigh uh, 254 pounds. It really weighs 254 pounds. And uh, um, just common hand tools. All I had was a drill press, some files. I had a Dremel sander, um, which was probably the, the best thing I had for the entire construction. Um, Dacron fabric, 1.7 ounce. And we also, one of the unique things about this is we used uh, the Jerry Bunner method of, of fabric covering, of painting to paint the airplane. Um, all it is is latex house paint mixed with a, a chemical called Floetrol that makes it flow really smoothly, gets inside the fabric, seals it, and then you, uh, you do three coats of base to fill the weave, and then you do three coats of color, and you use a color enamel, enamel color, automotive enamel for the top coat, and if you squirt it with uh, Armor All or any of the protectorants, it'll last just as long as a, as a factory finish. It probably won't last as like 10 years or 20 years for stits, but it'll last long enough to where, you know, I painted my airplane for 50 bucks instead of 2,000 no sulfur lights cost, you know. So um, it's a good way, a good inexpensive way to get in the air, and um, and it works great. Okay, you were talking about the uh, construction, you mentioned with gussets, so we're using uh, rivets in, uh, as far as the uh, joining together of the parts and pieces? Well, that's a good question, because um, you can use stainless pop rivets. You can use stainless steel pop rivets instead of all these bolts, and I'm sure you'll you'll, you'll get a good look at it in a minute, but um, we use all A and 3 bolts that run through sandwich construction, and uh, um, you can use stainless pop rivets, uh, but you wouldn't be able to take it apart. This way, if you use the bolts, you can take it all apart, but it will be a lot lighter with, uh, with just the stainless rivets. Okay, let's jump up into the wing then. What kind of construction are we using in the wing? Like, uh, are we using a ladder, a tube and ladder type? Or right. Wing? What kind of it's a lot like the kit box in a way. Um, the, uh, these wings now are foam with one millimeter ply cap strips, um, and they've got uh, blocks in between to hold them upright. Uh, for the loading and everything, and then you just glue the the fabric straight onto the to the ribs with polytac. And uh, I'm trying to get away from rib stitching because I hate to rib stitch and everybody hates rib stitch. And uh, that's just an idea I had. The plans will include the wing, ribs will be an inch and a half wide with the inch and a half wide cap strips, and you can uh, you know then you can have much more bearing surface and everything you know surface for the peel and all that. But uh, originally we had uh, aluminum tube ribs. Uh, drifter type or, compel or um, challenger, any of those kind of uh, ribs would work. And uh, you've got the diagonals and the cross braces, just like any other ultralight wing. And it's got a Clark Y airfoil on it. Now, uh, we're talking about the plans for the airplane. Uh, are the plans actually out there and ready to go now? No. Um, actually, what happened was last week we, uh, we had an accident and uh, the tail wheel, uh, we had a problem with the tail wheel and we had a gust of wind at the wrong time and it took me into another airplane. And uh, the way she sits now, She's not, um, she's not completely together yet, but we were a week before the air show, and we were just doing the test flights. And I have flown her, she has flown, and uh, I knew I needed to change the, the wings curvature a little bit, so we, we just bit the bullet, and took her home, and redid the wings, and uh, got a much better shape for the airfoil, and uh, just the first hops I did, you could tell a complete difference in the airplane. But we should release plans, um, you know, today is the, the 9th of April, 2000. We should have the plans out, I'd say, within a month or so from now. They're about 90% complete. And once the flight test is done, once she's completely tested, then we'll release the plans. When we're looking at the plans, how are the plans going to come? Uh, like, uh, That's any a good idea question. How many pages? Yeah, there's, there's uh, almost 35 sheets of, uh, I think it's 28 by 11. Um, uh, every fitting is full size. Uh, every every part you need that, that normally like the ribs are full size. You don't have to you know build anything, draw it out to be bigger. You know, um, there's a complete builder's manual from A to Z. 
uh, with pictures. It describes every single aspect of airplane construction. Even if you've never picked up a wrench or anything, you can look at the plans and it'll say, this is how you draw a tube out. This is how you mark a tubing to be square. This is how you drill a tool, a, you know, tubing. This is how you deburr a hole. It'll show you everything. And uh, we've also got online support. Um, <clears throat> we've got a, a extensive website that shows how to do every how this was the concept all the way to the finishing parts of how it's finished. Now, what about the supplier for materials? Are you supplying the materials, or are you uh, do you have a, a list of materials? Where yes, we do. Buy it? Yeah, well, the, we have a complete list of materials, and we also have on the site we have a uh, a section for builders where they can go and they can trade stuff and buy parts and things, and <laughs> and they can find out the best prices. We have a, a section where they can go and anybody that's got the best price for whatever they found it, be it wheelbarrow tires or tubing or square tubing or an engine, they'll they'll post where they got that that tubing at so everybody's always guaranteed to get the lowest price now let's get right into the airplane itself then you're using what standard stick and rudder type of control on it right okay. pretty much yeah okay uh how do you mean pretty much well uh, they uh what i did was uh it's kind of a unique control system because um i've got a torque tube running from the stick there's a torque tube that runs underneath the seat and it's got a bell crank and the bell crank runs up with turnbuckles, or you could use push rods to turn to. Uh, it's got turnbuckles in it, and it goes up to the fittings on the ailerons, which actuates the ailerons. It's a real simple, really light, and uh, it's really solid in the air. It can't go anywhere, you know. So, so that works out real well. And how about the elevator? Is it the cable? elevator right now? Is uh, it can be either cable or it can be a tube. Uh, the tube weighs a lot, and it'll probably, you know. It's going to get close to the weight limit, so we're probably going to go back to the cables with a pulley system, and that'll work just as good and be a lot lighter. Now, what about building times on the airplane? For me, it took <laughs> being a prototype, as you as you well know, it, it's taken me five times as long to build it and five times as much money. But um, you can build this airplane from plans, roughly. I'm saying 250 hours now, which you know everybody laughs at because it usually takes a thousand hours for any airplane to be built. But but. What we're going to have is we're going to have people that are building them now that are going to actually document every single minute they spent, and that's the exact times I'm going to put on the site and on the plans. So they'll be exact, and if it's high and it shies people away, too bad. That's that's the actual truth, and that's you know. So we'll get an average in the next few months and see see what it really takes to build one. Now, I know you've got a little 277 on this. Uh, are you planning on uh, offering other engines yeah. for it? Or yeah. Yeah. Well, they can. Sport? They can use a 277, but uh, more than likely, a lot of people are going to use a Kawasaki 440. They'll use a because uh, those are fairly inexpensive, and they can come off the Phantoms and things, and they they bolt right on. They're good weight limit. Anything up to about 85, 90 pounds, you don't have to mess with anything CG wise. So you can use a whole variety of engines, 447, 377, you know, engines like that, because those are still in production. Okay, if somebody want to get more information, how we get a hold of you? Sure. Um, uh, the name's Dave Edwards. Uh, you can go to my site. It's at uh, affordaplane.com. Um, you can see everything about that there. There's order forms. You can order the plans off the site. You can see the builders.